morning and welcome to worship this day. As we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter together, we welcome all who are here in person and all who are joining us on the live stream. If you need a bulletin, you can find it at our website, htluth.org. I just really have one announcement today just to highlight that we are returning back to some practices that we um, shared prior to the pandemic, and that includes readers. We've already returned to readers, but we are also going to um, ask for greeters and people to deliver altar flowers after worship or during the week, sometime during the week. And there are sign-up sheets in the narthex, or you can simply call the church office and volunteer to do one of those um, duties. And with that being said, we're also going to return to standing throughout our liturgy. We're known for that as Lutherans, so um, I invite you now to please rise for Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing, you rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal and all-merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Acts, the ninth chapter. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged on, on, to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now he was going along and approaching Damascus. Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, 
because they had heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen a vision, a man named Ananias come, will come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you, on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. We will read responsively from Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord and the faithful. Give thanks to the holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I plead with my Lord, saying, What profits is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, Hear O Lord, Lord have you have mercy upon, upon me. O Lord, Lord be, be my, my helper. Lord. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, Lord my God, God, I will I give you thanks, thanks forever. forever. Word of Lord, the word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel according to John, the 21st chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please pray with me. Let the meditation of our hearts and minds, the words that are spoken and our hearing of them, be acceptable unto you, O God, our Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So out throughout the four Gospels, there are reports of how the resurrected Jesus appears to his followers, his disciples. But there is no single story. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John each tell the story a bit differently. Jesus appears in Galilee. Jesus appears in Jerusalem. Jesus appears in a closed room. Jesus appears on an open road. Jesus talks with a woman. Jesus meets the men on the mountain and the sea. The stories are different, but they all have one thing in common, and that is that Jesus appears again and again to those who need to be strengthened for their journey and the days ahead. In today's story from John's Gospel, we hear Peter say, I am going fishing. 
And the other disciples respond and say, well, we're going to go with you. It makes a lot of sense that Peter and those disciples want to go fishing because fishing was something that came naturally to Peter and the rest of the men. After all, they were fishermen, especially Peter was a fisherman before he dropped everything to follow Jesus. So when we consider where the story falls in the life of the disciples, we can realize that they must have been exhausted. They have experienced a myriad of feelings and emotions in the days leading up to this event. They have witnessed the death of Christ. They have seen his burial and then the discovery of the empty tomb followed by Jesus appearing to them. They have been on a physical, emotional, and spiritual roller coaster. It's no wonder that Peter needed to return to something he knew, something more normal, something familiar, something to help him try to relax and unwind and get perspective after all that had happened. So they went fishing because it was natural and familiar for them. I would imagine that most of the disciples had fished from a very early age, probably since the time they could walk. And fishing was something that was part of everyday life for Galilean men of the first century, so it was something that could be done without much thought. I think we can identify with those fishermen that day. I am sure, like me, You can think of a time in your life when you've experienced difficulties, when you've had a difficult time, when you needed to have some peace-filled time to get away and try to forget and get centered. Or perhaps at the end of a really bad day, you decide to just go home and do something soothing. For me, it's something like working in the garden or knitting or sewing. For my husband, John, it's working out, doing exercise or some other physical activity. Maybe it's to ride a bike or reading, or maybe for you it's something else. But I think you know what I'm talking about. So the disciples in today's story took comfort in familiar routines. They went back to what they knew, fishing. Perhaps they were trying to run away from their troubles, Perhaps they were responding to the practical obligations of life and needed food. One of the important things, though, I think that we can notice in this text is that Jesus appears to them in the midst of their ordinary activities. Jesus meets them where they are, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Jesus points them to the way of bounty and fullness, to thriving, not just surviving. Jesus appears in an instance of pure grace with no strings attached. And if you look closely at the story, the fishermen gather in their catch. They throw those nets over to fish before they truly recognize that this is Jesus. They don't earn their bounty by first declaring Jesus as Lord. Instead, their blessings are before their belief, beyond their belief. Jesus comes to these disciples in the middle of their doubts, their disbelief, their fatigue, to give them life-giving abundance, to help them cope with all the events swirling around them in their lives. Jesus comes to help them. There is an abundance of love in the story of Jesus and his disciples. Actually, one of the predominant themes of the whole Gospel of John is God's abundant love and grace. John is very deliberate in setting the tone in his Gospel in his first chapter. And in verse 16 of that first chapter, John says and writes about Jesus saying, from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. And this is an example There is an abundance found in the number of the fish caught. It's hard to know exactly why John wrote that there were 153 fish. When John and I visited the Holy Land, we got to ride on a boat on the Sea of Tiberias. And on that boat ride, our guide told us that historians believe that that number 153 actually represented the number of the varieties, the different varieties of fish that existed in the sea at that day on that day. They don't still exist, 
but that's what they believe historians say. So whatever the reason, though, for that 153 uh, different kinds of fish, it's simply a lot of fish. Perhaps the abundance of fish can show us that whenever Jesus is present, there is abundance, revealing God's love for us. And another powerful scene in this story that I would imagine most of you caught is the exchange between Peter and Jesus. Three times Jesus asks Peter to confess his love. And Peter does just that. He says that he loves Jesus, not once or twice, but three times. And one can almost feel how disheartened Peter might have felt, but by that third time when Jesus says to him, do you love me? But perhaps as readers and one to know the story so well, we catch on quicker than Peter himself. We know that this is reminiscent of that last time Peter was standing around a fire in the high priest's court and denied Jesus three times. So Jesus invites Peter to confess his love for him three times, symbolically wiping away the three times he denied him, showing him grace and forgiveness. Jesus not only provides forgiveness, but invites Peter to participate by telling him to feed his sheep, tend his lambs, feed his lambs. Peter is not only forgiven, he's drawn back into discipleship community and given an important and meaningful work to do. We are really actually given that same invitation as we share baptism. We're invited to share in the work and ministry of Jesus. And at the end of the baptismal liturgy, there is a statement that we say together for everyone who's baptized. We say we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. In baptism, God invites each of us to share in the work of Christ by sharing from any abundance that we may have been given together or corporately as a church. Throughout our lives, God challenges us to recognize the places in our lives where we can share the grace and love that we have experienced and known from God through Jesus. That can be as parents or friends or students or teachers, as employees or volunteers, as citizens or neighbors, as siblings or relatives, as participants of a team or a club. In all the parts of our lives, We're presented with opportunities to care for the people and the world God loves so very much. In baptism, we're given the wondrous gift and promise that God's presence will always be with us. God is always with us, never giving up on us, just like those disciples. God never stops expecting the best from us and gives us endless opportunities to say, just like Peter, yes, Lord, I love you, as God says to us again and again, I love you. And then we're given the opportunity to share the hope found in the story of resurrection, life, and love that we are contemplating these 50 days of Easter. Amen.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Set us free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, for people in need, and for all creation. Almighty God, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that we may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the world around us. God, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. Strengthen the work of peacemakers and send comfort to those impacted by prejudice, injustice, conflict, or war. And we pray especially for all suffering that is happening in and around the Ukraine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold your children who cry out to you. Wherever people are overcome by the fear of suffering, breathe into them your life and peace. Today, we pray especially for Kay Baker, Jim Bomberger, John Bowerman, Dennis Buchanan, Fran Buchanan, Barb Cassini, Kyle David, Donna Dixon, Shirley Espenshade, Wally Folkrod, Marie Halliday, Carolyn Hess, Diane Holabeck, Rosavina Hamasak, Mary Hebner, Charlene Hurst, Courtney Christen, Marilyn Lehman, Brian Leonard, Diane Lingle, Bill and Laura McEwen, Steve Miller, Margaret Sherrick, Diane Stott, Christina Terhune, Marilyn Udell, Nancy Van Kirk, Barb Walker, Bob Warden, Mike Welty, and all those we either name in our hearts or aloud. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us the words of your saints, who, like Thomas, boldly confessed your Son as Lord and God. With Jesus, our leader, empower us to live according to his ways. Give hope and peace to all who mourn. Today, we pray especially for the family of Whitney Simmons and the family of Rosemary Smith, the mother of Karen Hunt. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your living, life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another from our seat. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to give give our thanks thanks and and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here, and all who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. The body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Jesus, live as 
Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. 
Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.